In this video, we're gonna show you our five by eight cargo trailer conversion to a camper. We are going to give you a tour of our rescue wagon, which is what we call our little camper. We're gonna show you the things that we felt like we had to have when we ordered our cargo trailer. The things that we did afterwards to both the outside and the inside that were our do-it-yourself items. And then we're going to share with you the cost of some of those items and what the total cost of the camper was. Also, we're going to share some of the must-haves and we're going to show you how you can do some of these things on your own. And ultimately, how you can use your little camper to be free. So we decided to get into jeeping with some friends of ours. Some friends had a jeep and really got us excited about going out doing the whole jeeping thing. And so we got our third child, Roxy. Maybe the most expensive child we've had. And of course you can't pull a fifth wheel with a jeep, but we really wanted to have our jeep when we were camping. How could we have those adventures and still be able to camp in somewhat of comfort with some air conditioning and the like? So we started looking at all those fancy little Jeep uh, campers that aren't necessarily just for Jeeps, but they're light enough and they were super expensive. So some friends of ours had done a conversion on a cargo trailer. So we looked into doing that as well and we decided to actually order a brand new cargo trailer. And outfit it just the way we wanted it for our Jeep adventures. So the first thing we did was order our utility trailer, mm, cargo trailer. So we decided to name our little camper the Rescue Wagon. Why the Rescue Wagon? Because we are rescuing ourselves from boredom and from just going to work all the time. We wanted to be free because we were really in a hurry and we wanted to be able to kick off our adventure pretty quickly. We actually wanted to be able to take it to the Outer Banks. So we knew we needed to move somewhat quickly. Okay, so when we ordered the cargo trailer, there was a couple things that we really wanted right off the bat. One was an air conditioner because having it, ordering it installed was the same price as me buying it and having to install it myself. Also has heat strips as well. So as long as we have a 30 amp hookup, either through direct electricity or a generator, we have heating and cooling as well. A couple other things, stabilizing jacks on the bottom here so that we could uh, have all four corners so that anytime we were anywhere, it would be nice and stable. We ordered it with a straight axle so that we could jack it up and put our stock Jeep tires on it. Now I did have to do a spacer in between here because uh, it had to convert from um, to a five by five bolt pattern. When we ordered the camper, we decided to get white metal walls on the inside as well as insulation. One of the things we added was recessed E-track that we could place our bed brackets in for stability. We ordered the camper with a door that opened sideways rather than a ramp door. One, because we wanted the white interior wall so we could use it as a video screen for projecting. Not having the ramp door keeps snakes and spiders and other things from sliding in unexpectedly. We ordered the cargo trailer with the white and black checkered flooring. Although you don't see a lot of it, uh, there is a place for it and we wanted to uh, have it kind of match the in interior and the exterior. We ordered it with a 50 amp electrical box on the inside with an outdoor connection right here. So we can actually plug in our extension cord either into an outlet or into a generator which will supply the interior of the camper with the electricity. It came with multiple outlets um, this one was a, an exterior outlet that was in it as well as a few interior outlets. We also specified the height at which our outlets were to be to make sure that they were actually above the level of the bed. Um, however, 
I miscalculated on that because we ended up adding a topper to the mattress to make it more comfortable and kind of used up that space. So make sure you take those things into consideration if you're ordering one as well. We actually ordered it with camper doors, with the handles that were built in, not the big hasps. Um, they decided to not follow my instructions on this and gave it to us with the hasps. So um, needless to say that when we went to pick it up, there was a problem after I drove five hours to get there and they had to end up uh, discounting the trailer heavily for me to be able to purchase it um, because I didn't want to be able to be locked in at night. So when we stay, we have to put a lock on this so somebody cannot lock us in. We don't want to be locked in. We definitely wanted to make sure we had windows and we wanted to just go ahead and order it with it so that it was already done when it came to us. So we ordered it with the windows that you see here. So we've shared with you what we ordered with the cargo trailer, the rescue wagon, but what we now need to show you is the really good stuff. The stuff that we added that makes this camper phenomenal. We put the stock Jeep tires on here because the original tires were only 15 inch tires. And by putting these on there, it gave us much better ground clearance. Also has a much better look to it. It's much more aggressive looking. And we, had, we did have to put a spacer in there that converted the bolt pattern correctly. Uh, the next thing we added was a spare tire holder. And I had a gentleman that works for me. Uh, he's a welder. He welded up a foot for that to sit on. And then I mounted a spare tire holder that I got off Amazon onto the wall. And actually what I did with that was um, went around a stud that was in there and uh, actually some E-Track and put some brackets so that it held it very securely. But the, the foot that, it, that was put on there will actually hold my weight standing on it. So uh, that was a great addition. We added a gas can holder. And what we did was we uh, put a piece of aluminum that went into the studs and then so we could screw the, the black piece on there and then mounted it as well down here into a stud that went across the bottom so it's very secure. Other than just looking cool with this gas can on the back, actually when we go camping at the Outer Banks, we bring our generator. And back when gas prices were really cheap, it was still $5 a gallon on the island. So we bring gas with us to make sure that the, the generator, we have electricity. Okay, so a couple things here on the front. Um, we've got fishing pole holders uh, to carry our fishing rods. We mounted these uh, directly into the studs and we also use a, a rubber backing behind the bolt so that it cannot leak into the uh, into the actual vehicle itself. And I'm eventually going to add in an additional piece up here that will actually lock those poles in place so nobody can steal them. I forgot the fishing poles. So we're not really huge fisher people, but it looks really cool to have those on the front. We added an exterior light that is solar powered that turns on with motion detector, which comes handy, very handy when you're out in the middle of nowhere. We put silicone caulking around there just to keep uh, from, I mounted it with screws and it's got a sticky pad on the back. But well, since the screws were in there, we wanted to make sure that it didn't uh, leak into the camper. Uh, an additional LED light on the outside. And again, the cool thing about those is you can actually shut them off so they don't come on all the time. Coming around to the front, just a standard uh, normal hookup hitch. Uh, here we have a tank and actually a funny story here, um, a guy from work actually made this for me. He's a welder, but his tank at home was just a little bit smaller than this one. So he's gonna, he's gonna fix it for me and also put another one like this on the back corner coming up. Next thing we added was uh, this box here, which is a waterproof box that we got off Amazon. And inside here, we have an instant hot water shower. And in behind here, I did put a little bit of a heat shield because the, the exhaust comes directly out of the top. Uh, we hook it into the propane tank, hook our water up to uh, either an outside spigot, or I'll show you the pump in just a minute, which we can pull it out of a bucket. But this will allow you, you basically, as soon as you turn the water on, it's instantly hot water. You shut it off, it shuts off. Um, this additional waterproof box holds our pump that will uh, pump directly out of a five gallon bucket or any other 
type of unit that you have to give you a hot shower. We added in the uh, handle for the door that's an RV door handle. Um, actually had to cut out the interior wood to put that in. Um, it was a great addition. That was like $30 off Amazon. Then we can lock this from the inside and it opens like a normal door. I added an additional outlet, a GFCI on the outside uh, so that we could have power right next to our handy dandy shelf. Okay, this shelf, what we did is we purchased stainless steel brackets uh, from Amazon. And then what we did is we actually screwed directly into the studs. I reused a couple of screws where I could and then put my own self-tapping screws as well uh, with a little bit of rubber backing in behind there so that they would not leak into the uh, camper itself. We love to sit outside, but we love shade as well. So we ordered an awning from Amazon, which was fabulous. We want to show you how we pull out the awning and what it looks like. And it's really sturdy. Like we were on the beach and you know how windy the beach can be. And we did not have any issues at all. Okay, one of the things I'd like to show you is how I connected it up here, okay? So if you look along the top, you will see, if you look along the top, you'll see some additional screw heads that are along there. Okay, what I did was I took three inch are actually two and three quarter inch stainless steel screws. And I placed some uh, backing in behind there. I, I typically call it the roll of goo. It's what's used to uh, um, uh, put things on when you, put, when you uh, screw things in. It's like a, it's almost like a, a clay type substance that goes in behind that seals and keeps water from coming in. So I put that in behind the entire piece. And then I also, once I had it on, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, I'll try to show it, but I actually put a bead of caulking down the rest of the way so that uh, no additional water could get through. Um, worked very well. The rescue wagon has everything we need on the outside to have an epic little camping adventure. The shower, the propane tank, a shelf for cooking, a gas can, solar powered lights, shade, and so much more. We have so much fun when we head out in the rescue wagon. But now let's move to the inside of our cozy little camper and take a tour and look around and see all the really cool things we've added inside to make this the best little camper for us. We took a shoe holder and we screwed it into the door so we have all kinds of mesh little pockets where we keep all kinds of little things that we need toothbrushes your uh, bug spray flashlights water, you know dish soap just all of the things that you might need or want this is a great place to keep all of that stuff the cabinets, we decided that uh, we needed customized cabinets to be able to uh, work around the fridge and the microwave. Using the measurements from inside, we used strips of poplar, which is more of a hardwood than a softwood. And we made sure that we um, used a lip on each particular area so that things could not fall out. We built it in sections, placed it inside, and then used plywood for the top. It's really important in this small space to really plan out where your storage is going to be, where you're going to put everything, because you're very limited, so you have to be super organized. The top of the cabinets was painted with a countertop paint from Amazon. It looks like granite. It's really durable and was really easy to put on. We also put a power strip on top of the countertop, which was so beneficial for things like plugging in my curling iron and hair dryer and all those essentials. And then of course, to go with that curling iron and hair dryer, we we're gonna need a mirror. So we installed on the wall a mirror that has an arm that pulls out and you can move the mirror around in any direction you need it. And then it simply pushes back in and doesn't take up any space at all. We purchased cargo nets to put in the front of the cabinet so that it would hold anything that was in the cabinet 
inside without falling out when we were traveling. It also allowed us to not have to put cabinet doors on, and that saved us some space. The cargo nets came with pockets inside of them, which was a really great feature so we could store even more things inside the pockets. We also placed little cargo nets next to the bed like nightstands. We decided to place a cargo net across the top of the cabinets. Uh, We did this so we could place items on top of the cabinet while we were driving and still keep them in place, keep them from falling throughout the, uh, the camper. So who wants to go to the bathroom outside? Not me. So we got a portable toilet and we put it in the rescue wagon, but I don't really like that there's a toilet sitting in the rescue wagon. So I got a handy dandy Ottoman cover from Amazon, which slides right over the toilet and makes it into a little seat. We love the inside of the rescue wagon, but the bed was really important to us because if I can't get any sleep, I'm not really that happy. We created the bed by using one by furring strips that we screwed into a two by four using a quarter inch piece of plywood underneath to provide support so it wouldn't scissor together. Placing handles on the front with two by fours as support, this allowed us to expand or contract the bed size. We got a full size mattress, a memory foam one, I think we bought it at Walmart. Then we put a topper on top of it and we took a an electric knife and we simply cut it. So after we cut the mattress, we cut the bottom of the mattress as well. So I've got it right here. We cut the mattress at the bottom in two pieces and then we have our memory foam topper that we matched and cut it as well so that we could slide the bed in and out and have a little more room. And I'll show you what that looks like. But what was nice about this is it was very comfortable. With the memory foam mattress and a topper, it's really comfortable. And then when it's time to go to bed, that's when it gets a little tight in here sometimes. I go ahead and get my side out first. I'm able to pull out my side reach up here, grab the rest of the mattress, slide it down, put the mattress topper, and he simply pulls out his side. We purchased a comforter from Amazon for $50 and then used the dust ruffle to make curtains. And we are ready for bed. So sometimes when we go to bed, I do like to watch a little TV. So we simply put a cell phone holder because, you know, it's just not big enough to have a full-size TV. Harbor Freight had these really cool battery lights that were only $5 a piece. Although we have overhead lights that are very bright, sometimes we don't have power. So we use these battery-operated lights to give us some light in the, the rescue wagon. An additional piece that we put in uh, is for when we're laying inside, we've got a way to lock the camper from the inside and uh, pull the handle uh, to close it. We have plenty of space up underneath the uh, bed to be able to uh, store things. And we actually had a two by four in there and we cut it to be a little bit smaller and then reinforced it with some metal so that Um, It was just a little bit too small to put certain tubs up in there and have things above them, so we we modified that a little bit. Uh, We added these screens so that while we're camping, we can open it up, we can look out at the horizon, whether we're at the ocean, and that will keep the, the small critters out. And then, so we actually modified those as seen on TV uh, screens that have the uh, magnets in them. So uh, what we did was we cut it to fit uh, correctly. There's Velcro that goes down the side that seals it, but then we also put additional screws in. And even though these screws stick out a little bit, the way this door shuts, it doesn't fully shut. So those are perfect to hold it in. And then when you go in, screen opens, and the screen closes in behind you. This one's a little tight. We wanted it nice and tight, so sometimes you have to, to grab it to pull it back. So that's it folks, that's our rescue wagon. The total cost was $7,328. 
If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We hope this video helped you and will allow you to get out there and be free. If you want to see some of our adventures, check out our other channel at Be Free Benson Adventures. <laughs>